Hi everyone, welcome to the Immigration.ca live stream series. If this is your first time joining, my name is Andrea and I'm here with immigration attorney Colin Singer. Colin is managing partner of Immigration.ca in Canada. Today we're joining you from Westmount Park here in Montreal. It's a beautiful fall day, uh, so you can see the, the beautiful fall leaves behind us. Uh, the topic of discussion is going to be the most discussed topic in the news today, and that's the results of the American election. So we received a lot of interest in immigration to Canada as a result, so we'll be discussing your options in coming to Canada as an American or as another nationality. Well, Colin, should we get started? Let's do it. Okay, perfect. Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, the topic of today's uh, discussion, uh, you can find our uh, writing uh, on our LinkedIn profile, uh, as well as our um, news articles for November. The topic is, Dear America, Keep Calm. There's plenty of room in Canada. Uh, the backdrop to this is uh, for individuals in America, uh, as well as foreign nationals worldwide, uh, we're going to give some perspective on what your options are if you're interested in relocating to Canada. Um, of course, uh, there's a tendency for many Americans, as we're seeing on our um, site, uh, a lot of people are, are inquiring about options on immigrating to Canada. Uh, so, of course, uh, we don't want people to, to take part in a knee-jerk reaction, um, and we want to give people some perspective uh, on what your options are. Of course, the backdrop to this is uh, Canada's immigration policies uh, and particularly their immigration numbers that were uh, recently tabled. Uh, for which, 2017. For, so for 2017. The, the, uh, so the, the target would be 300,000 uh, new immigrants. Right. In 2016, we admitted globally for permanent residence, we admitted uh, in the range of, of 320,000 people. Right. The target numbers were 300. And the Canadian government uh, is, is going to replicate that again for next year. So there's, there's a, a push for what we would say is record numbers of immigrants. Uh, the numbers coming into Canada represents approximately 0.85% uh, of our population. We're 36 million people. Right. And we're bringing in a very healthy number of around 300,000 people. How does that fit into uh, perhaps what your options are in, in Canada? Um, the biggest category of people coming to Canada is the economic class. Uh, we've, we, we have targeted 172,000 for next year. And within that category, the biggest uh, component of, of, uh, of economic class immigrants is the federal skilled worker uh, program, worker program uh, the um, business immigration program, the uh, provincial immigration programs, and uh, the Quebec immigration program. So all of these subcomponents uh, form part of the bigger class of economic immigration. Uh, the government is planning to increase its numbers in terms of the number of economic class uh, immigrants that they're looking to bring in. And Canada has uh, a number of programs. We have what we call shared jurisdiction. So in Canada, we've got our 10 provinces, our territories, and the federal government, all having a, a, a role to play in immigration. So you have the central federal government uh, giving its uh, different programs. The largest number of people will come in under the federal program. Uh, and that is going to be a healthy number for 2017. Yes. Uh, we have primarily within the economic, we have this system called the express entry system. Right, so people are ranked on their comprehensive ranking score, so a combination of the age, education, work experience, and other factors. So with the, I mean, as we will, Canada will be accepting more economic class immigrants, the CRS score definitely will be dropping, most well, likely. Well, well that's it. Uh, the economic uh, express entry system uh, is one in which uh, we have a, a point system. And each periodic, uh, two times a month, uh, there's a draw. And uh, there's a, a score you need to have to get into the system, get, get out of the system. Uh, so traditionally, uh, we have seen... Uh, a, a score which is quite high. 
uh, in, in quite simply uh, the, the ideal candidate who would get into uh, the system and who would then get an invitation to apply for permanent residence is, is a candidate with uh, a score of over 450. Right. Uh, that kind of candidate is typically an individual who's uh, around age 30, uh, has a, a master's degree, uh, quite high levels of, of education, and I'm sorry, Working English yeah. uh, or French, and, and work experience. Uh, so unless you had those very high credentials, yes. Uh, it's very hard to get out of the pool, and, and the way you would do so is if you have an offer of employment. An employer is your gold standard. We've, exactly. mentioned, this, we've mentioned this before. Uh, what we're seeing for next year is that individuals can expect the scores that are being uh, issued every, every two weeks to fall quite significantly. And why is that? Uh, and, and, and by inference, it should be much easier to come to Canada in 2017. In 2017. And, yeah. the, and the reason for this is because the government is, is going to have to make up a lot of numbers coming from the express entry pool. Uh, in previous years, you had a mix uh, of individuals coming from uh, an older system and the new system. Mm -hmm. So you had a 50-50 people coming under the new express entry system and then 50% coming from the pre-express entry system which came in in January 2015. Uh, what you're going to have next year is a smaller number coming from the older system, quite a small number, perhaps 25%, and uh, you know, 75% coming from the express entry. Uh, and what that means is the government is going to have to significantly lower their scores in order to get what we see as about 72,500 people, right. including an applicant and dependents, uh, in order to get those kinds of numbers. So the bigger picture is that it will probably get easier next year uh, if you want to come to Canada uh, under permanent residence. Now, if you're an American or if you're a foreign national uh, living in the U.S. or anywhere uh, globally, for that matter, yes. um, these you know, how can you come to Canada? What are what are the basic uh, categories that uh, you could look to uh, in in making a move to Canada? Okay, so first of all, I mean, if you'd like to come to Canada as a visitor, obviously there's options to come as a visitor. If a visitor's visa is needed, you could always apply for that. Right. However, if you want to come here to live and to work, you'll need to fit into the categories basically. Uh, so you'd need to look into your options. So uh, there's, as we discussed, there's the express entry system. There's also the family class. Uh, there's finding a job and getting a work permit. But I guess we'll break it down, and we could just discuss first, for example, if you're a member of the technology sector. Right. Or... Well, the first broad category is if you're a person in the technology field, uh, we've got a new program coming into play next year, uh, a fast-track visa, uh, a process that the government will outline very shortly. Uh, and there looking for if you're an employer bringing in a foreign workers in the IT field uh, or if you're going to be a temp uh, a, a permanent uh, applicant uh, there's going to be mechanisms for you to come to Canada quite quickly uh, so if you're an IT professional good news for you on that front um, if you're a generally a non IT professional uh, you you've got to look at the express entry system uh, and, and again, the numbers are going to be significant, and we see people uh, coming to Canada from the express entry. Uh, your options look pretty bright next year. But again, if you don't have the ideal profile to come to Canada, uh, high education, uh, age 30, impeccable English skills, uh, good work experience, then you're going to need to look to an employer right. to give you that uh, extra number of points that's going to be very significant for you to receive what we call an invitation to apply for permanent residence. And we do provide employment search assistance to all our clients as well. Right. We, we help uh, all our clients coming to uh, work with us uh, will uh, receive assistance on the search uh, consulting side. We have an independent, standalone uh, employment consulting uh, enterprise called Global Recruiters of Montreal. And we're quite... Uh, uh, knowledgeable about the various labor markets uh, in uh, Canada and of course uh, that's the challenge is that we're such a, a large country with so many different labor markets yeah. uh, you know what's going on in let's say uh, one area of the country 
uh, could be for a particular occupation is is quite different, of course, given uh, how large we are. Exactly. Uh, the other thing is, if you're an American uh, and you want to come to work temporarily, uh, you currently have options uh, until uh, under under NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. Of course, uh, there were discussions, and and Donald Trump did. Uh, indicate in his uh, election platform that he was looking to uh, significantly modify NAFTA. But currently, uh, NAFTA offers a number of professionals, uh, what we call uh, Appendix uh, 1603D applicants. And if you go to our website, you'll see today's discussion and our article on uh, Dear America, Keep Calm. Uh, there's a lot of occupations where you can come and work in Canada and get a work permit uh, on the strength of an offer of employment uh, from a Canadian employer. Um, the other major category is the international students. Let's, let's okay. tell people what's going on there. So there's going to be some developments because the government is going to make it easier for international students to stay in Canada and become permanent residents. So there, we're expecting some changes to give them actually more points okay. uh, under the express entry system. Also, uh, there's been discussion with regards to uh, not requiring uh, an LMIA. Right. So there are options. So if, if you're looking to come to Can if you're looking to get another degree, we have great universities, so you can always come here to study and then look into your options after you receive your degree. The other category uh, that's, that's interesting, I think, that people should know about, I mean, in terms of being able to predict uh, uh, an outcome that's uh, fairly reliable, if you're a business immigrant, if you're an individual with a high net worth, uh, whether you're uh, an owner-operator uh, or you're a high-level managerial uh, business person, uh, you know, there are a, a number of business programs in Canada which uh, take out a lot of the, uh, what we call the express entry is, is of course, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. If you don't have the right points, right. You're, you're waiting for an invitation. And, and, and so, you know, it's, it's more uncertain. But if you're a business immigrant, uh, your your options are a, a, a little more defined. Uh, you've got Quebec, which has an excellent business program, uh, which is the only program in the country for passive investments. Uh, you, you need a certain profile for that. Of course, it's for higher net worth individuals. But typically, if you're a business person with a net worth of 500,000 Canadian dollars, um, and you've got uh, business experience either as a manager uh, or an owner-operator of a business, uh, there are excellent options for you to come to Canada. Um, other than that, uh, the next major category would be provincial. Talk about a little bit, let's talk about provincial immigration a bit. So, I mean, Canada is divided up into provinces, so each province also has their own uh, nomination programs. So, I mean, you, that's another option for you. So should you qualify under one of those programs, uh, I mean, say you're in the express entry pool, you could be nominated by a province and receive provincial nomination. Right, and those programs change quite frequently. So you need to stay up to date. So, I mean, obviously we stay up to date for our clients on their behalf, but I mean, obviously it's very important to stay up to date with you know, the most recent regulations. And that, that, that would cover the economic class options for, for individuals who want to come to Canada uh, on a permanent basis or on a temporary basis, then of course if you're in a position to have a family member, uh, a close family member, a partner, spouse, uh, that is an option for sponsorship. Yes. So what's going on in that field that we uh, are looking to? So next year uh, Canada will be accepting 10,000 uh, parent or grandparent sponsorship cases. So, uh, I mean, if you, I mean, obviously, there you have to look into you know, seeing if you qualify to sponsor. So, if you're a Canadian citizen, or you are a Canadian permanent resident, you can look into your options to sponsor your parent or grandparent, and a partner and spouse, and a partner and a spouse as well. And so that's that's that would be family class. Um, and then, in terms of um, uh, we we talked about the students. Uh, so those are the broad. Um, range of, of, of options that uh, an individual in the States, uh, but, but I guess one of the more important uh, caveats we like to tell everyone is you want to visit Canada first. Yes. I mean, Canada is very different. It's a, it's, a, it's a very big country. There's different provinces. Every province is different. I mean, with regards to different aspects, even from climate to just, I mean, it's very important to know, you know where you're going to be moving to. So if you could come to Canada and just, ha you know, see 
see how you like it as well. And check out the labor market. So what we often try to have people do is uh, time your visit to attend job fairs, uh, work with recruiters, uh, and check out the various uh, employment options that could be available to you within the different sub-labor markets. So it's a question of uh, contacting employers, uh, getting your uh, digital uh, credentials in line, uh, and uh, taking the effort to, to really learning uh, where you could situate yourself from a work perspective, uh, and of course the living conditions. So what you don't want to do is just pack up and move to Canada. That, okay. that is uh, really, that is obviously not advisable. Uh, if you're going to come from the States, example, uh, you're going to uh, come and, and plan to live there permanently in Canada, that's not a good move. Uh, you really uh, want to uh, come uh, on a short-term visit, uh, indicate uh, as an American citizen, you know, you're, you're certainly allowed to come in and visit for up to six months. Yes. Uh, if uh, everything goes well, you would be uh, given uh, an open invitation to come and explore. Uh, but what you don't want to be doing is giving an indication that you're permanently going to stay in Canada. That would uh, raise uh, a lot of concern from our, our border officials. Uh, so those are the broad uh, options uh, that you have uh, if you're coming to the, uh, from, from America or if you're uh, an international candidate. Um, other than that, I think... Um, I think we've covered I mean, on our website, immigration.ca, you can find all the information that we discussed today. And obviously, if you want to discuss your eligibility, they can you please fill out our online assessment uh, so you can assess your eligibility and we'll get back to you. Great. So that covers uh, our, our topic for today. Uh, we look forward to perhaps uh, communicating with some of you uh, in the near future. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much.